Hello everyone. Welcome to our fifth international conference on molecular modeling and spectroscopy. I am Hainan L. Hayes, Professor of Material Science, Physics Department, Faculty of Women, Ain Shams University. This work is in collaboration with Professor Medhat Ibrahim, Professor of Applied Spectroscopy, Spectroscopy Department, National Research Center. I am going to present my poster entitled Heavy Metal Oxides Polyvinylidene Fluoride Nanocomposites, Molecular Modeling Approach. The addition of heavy metal oxides in nanoscale is supposed to enhance the electronic properties of polyvinylidene fluoride. Accordingly, density functional theory was used to study the effect of heavy metal oxides including manganese oxide, iron oxide, chrome oxide, nickel oxide, cobalt oxide, copper oxide and zinc oxide on the electronic properties of polyvinylidene fluoride. There are two terminals for polyvinylidene fluoride interacting with one then with two of the studied heavy metal oxides. Beside total dipole moments and homo-lumo orbitals, the molecular electrostatic potential is mapped. Correlating the obtained results, one can conclude that, as a result of interaction between heavy metal oxides and polyvinylidene fluoride, there an increase in the total dipole moment with a sharp decrease in the homo-lumo energies. Mapping both HOMO, LUMO and molecular electrostatic potential confirmed that heavy metal oxides increased the reactivity of polyvinylidene fluoride. Based on the obtained results, it could be concluded that the addition of heavy metal oxides to polyvinylidene fluoride enhances the surface and physical properties of polyvinylidene fluoride, which dedicated that the proposed structures can be used in optoelectric applications. Thank you for your attention. Willing for your questions. I am Professor Osama Osman, Professor at Spectroscopy Department, National Research Center. Also I am a member of the Molecular Modeling and Spectroscopy Group. This poster is conducted with my colleague Professor Hainan L. Hayes. The title of my poster is Spectroscopic Analyses of Chittison Doped with Lithium. Density functional theory was used to assess the effect of lithium upon chittison. Model molecule of Chittison 3 units was prepared. Lithium was interacted with Chittison through its terminals in Unit 1 and 2. Calculations were conducted with Gaussian program. The effect of hydration is also included as lithium is interacted with two water molecules. Total dipole moment of Chittison was 4.4330 Debye while HOMO LIMO band gap energy was 7.4930 electron volt. When lithium is interacted with chittison the total dipole moment is increased while homo-limo band gap energy was decreased. This means that the chittison is became more reactive. This results are confirmed with molecular electrostatic potential maps which indicate the reactivity of the chittison surface which is confirming the obtained results. Gathering the data together one can conclude the following. The effect of lithium upon chittison was studied using density functional theory. Lithium was interacted with 3 units chittison through its terminals in unit 1 and 2. The effect of hydration was studied too at the same level of theory. Total dipole moment. Homo limo band gap energy molecular electrostatic potential maps and IR frequencies were calculated for the studied structures. Total dipole moment of chittison was 4.4330 Debye while homo limo band gap energy was 7.4930 electron volts. When lithium is interacted with chittison the total dipole moment is increased to 19.1551 Debye while homo limo band gap energy was decreased to plus 2.3862 electron volts for the interaction of chittison with 3 lithium. Finally thank you for your interest. I am Professor Hainan L. Hayes, Professor at Physics Department, Faculty of Women for Arts, Science and Education, Ain Shams University. This poster is conducted with my colleague Professor Medhat Ibrahim. The title of my poster is Molecular Modeling Analyses for the Effect of Alkali Metal Oxides on PVC. Alkali metals show a potential application for enhancing the electronic properties of polymers. So that, Polyvinyl chloride with three units is supposed to be a model molecule with two active sites and terminal units. Lithium, sodium, potassium, magnesium, and calcium oxides were supposed to interact through each site, forming 12 model molecules. Total dipole moment. 
Homo limo band gap energy and molecular electrostatic potential were studied at using density functional theory. Total dipole moment of polyvinyl chloride is increased while its homo limo band gap energy is decreased which an indication of the increment in reactivity of polyvinyl chloride. The mapped molecular electrostatic potential confirms this finding and show an increase in the reactivity of the polyvinyl chloride as a result of interaction with the studied alkali metal oxides. Based on the collected data one can conclude that, the effect of lithium sodium potassium magnesium and calcium oxides upon polyvinyl chloride was studied using density functional theory. Alkali metal oxides was interacted with polyvinyl chloride through each site forming 12 model molecules. Total dipole moment, homo limo band gap energy and molecular electrostatic potential maps were calculated for the studied structures. Total dipole moment of polyvinyl chloride was 4.1511 Debye while homo limo band gap energy was 0.7864 electron volt. When lithium sodium potassium magnesium and calcium oxides are interacted with polyvinyl chloride total dipole moment of polyvinyl chloride is increased while its homo limo band gap energy is decreased gives an indication of the increment in reactivity of polyvinyl chloride. The mapped molecular electrostatic potential confirms this finding and show an increase in the reactivity of the polyvinyl chloride as a result of interaction with the studied alkali metal oxides. Finally thank you for your interest and willing for questions and comments. Hello everyone. I am Fatma Atia, Research Assistant at Spectroscopy Department, Physics Division, National Research Center. I am going to present my poster entitled Density Functional Theory Analyses of PVVA, Calcium Oxide Nanocomposite. This work under supervision of Professor Amr Abdul Ghani from National Research Center and Professor Nadra Nada from Faculty of Women Ain Shams University. Density Functional Theory was used to study the interaction between polyvinyl chloride covinyl ACETATE CO2 hydroxypropyl acrylate copolymer, PVVA, and calcium oxide. A model molecule of PVVA is assigned with six active sites. Calculated data indicated that PVVA has total dipole moment of 19.017 Debye and band gap energy of 2.738 electron volts. The results showed that total dipole moment and band gap energy suffer strong changes due to the interaction with calcium oxide. Additionally, the results confirmed that the most probable interaction is that processed through chlorine atom, position number one and calcium atom as it requires minimum energy to occur. Meanwhile, molecular electrostatic potential maps indicate that the reactivity of PVVA is increased as a result of interaction with calcium oxide. Thus, it can be concluded that the supposed structures of PVVA and calcium oxide can be used in optoelectric applications. I would like to thank you all for your time. Any questions? Hello everyone. Welcome to the 5th International Conference on Molecular Modeling in Spectroscopy. I am Mohamed El Manzi, Associate Professor at Physics Department, Faculty of Education, Ain Shams University. Today I am going to talk about computational notes on the analyses of flutamide. This work is in collaboration with Professor Osama Osman and Professor Abdul Aziz Mahmoud, Professors of Biophysics, Spectroscopy Department, National Research Center. The effect of heavy metals on the electronic properties of polyethylene terephthalate was studied by density functional theory. So that, a model of polyethylene terephthalate consists of three units is supposed to interact with copper oxide, cadmium oxide, couplet oxide, chromium oxide, ferries oxide, ferric oxide, magnesium oxide, nickel oxide, and zinc oxide separately. Each metal is interacted separately through one terminal then through the two terminals of the polyethylene terephthalate model molecule. For each optimized structure some important parameters such as total dipole moment, homo lumo band gap energy beside molecular electrostatic potential was studied using density functional level of theory. The overall results indicated that the total dipole moment of polyethylene terephthalate is increased as a result of interaction with heavy metals. While no significant effect is regarded for calculated homo lumo energies, the mapped electrostatic potential indicated that the surface of polyethylene terephthalate became more reactive as a result of interaction with heavy metals. 
It could be concluded that these model molecules could be useful to draw the reactivity and lead the research for controlling drugs in terms of their reactivity which in turn could suggest a solution in terms substations of active sites or minimizing the adverse impacts if it exists. I would like to thank you all for your time. Any questions? Hello everyone. I am Ayatollah Mahmoud, the Minister at Physics Department, Faculty of Women and Shams University. Our poster today about DFT study of the electronic properties of polyaniline, graphene, polyvinyl fluoride, and polytetrafluorocylene nanocomposite. The aim to control the electronic properties for electrode materials in many applications, such as supercapacitor. Conducting polymers, such as polyaniline, are modified with other polymers and the graphene to enhance their electronic properties. In this sense, molecular modeling based on the nested function theory at B3 lab plan 2DZ level of theory was utilized to study the interaction between polyaniline and the graphene and the polymer binder like polyvinyldene fluoride BVDF and polytetrafluorocylene BTFE. And some important properties are calculated, such as the total dipole moment and the homo-lomo band gap energy and the molecular electrostatic potential. The total dipole moment of polyanine was found to be 3.9 dy and increased to be 6.0 and 9.0 and 9.8 dy for polyanine graphene BTFE composite and for polyanine graphene BVDF. BTFE composite and polyaniline graphene BVDF composite respectively. The band gap energy of polyaniline is 4.35 electron volt and it decreased with the interaction of polyaniline and the graphene and the polymer binder to reach 3.5 and 3.0 and 2.1 electron volt for polyaniline graphene BTFE composite and polyaniline graphene BVDF composite and polyaniline graphene BVDF DTFE composite respectively. For a molecular electrostatic potential result, the reactivity and the electronic properties increased with the interaction of polyaniline with the graphene and the polymer binder. Our conclusion, polyaniline graphene BVDF BTFE composite was found to be the most suitable for electrode materials compared with polyaniline as it has the lowest band gap energy, 2.1 electron volt, and the higher reactivity and the higher conductivity. Thank you. Poster number nine. Presented by Dr. Noah Sabri.
Title DFT study for glycine metabolism in bacteria interacted with QO. MGO and FIO nanometal oxides amino acids are well-known macromolecules that exist in all types of living creatures, including bacteria. The interaction between nanoparticles and the bacterial membrane might be represented by amino acids. Glycine is the most basic amino acid that might represent the outer layer of bacteria and could be utilized to investigate and understand the effect of nanomaterial adsorption on bacteria. One of the most well-known approaches for investigating the interactions of biological systems is molecular modeling. The density function theory calculations was used to investigate the influence of nanomaterials such as copper oxide, magnesium oxide, and iron oxide on glycine metabolism in bacteria in terms of physics chemical, reactivity, and biocompatibility. The total dipole moment, band gap energy, and molecular electrostatic potential mapping were determined for the examined structures to follow the change in these attributes and reactivity. In the case of MgO adsorption with low electrostatic potential and strong electrostatic potential surrounding the MgO atom, the band gap of glycine dropped to 1.920 eV. According to the findings, MgO is the most efficient nanometal oxide in influencing the reactivity of glycine metabolism in bacteria making it an interesting therapeutic agent for biomedical applications. Thank you. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. The study بتاعتنا النهاردة بتتكلم عن the removal of atrazine from contaminated water by functionalized graphene quantum. Uh, we know exactly that is the most challenge now is water and the water resources is very short and limited with increase of population. So uh, treatment of water is so important issue. So in our study, we will uh, study to remove one of the most important pollutant in the water like pesticide uh, uh, called atrazine. Called atrazine is type of herbicides which commonly used to kill herbs. And because of its effectiveness, it is heavily used. And it can easily leach and accumulate in water to cause a health problem for both human and aquatic system. So we plan to, uh, to, to have adsorbent to adsorb atrazine effectively from water. We choose graphene and graphene functionalized by different group to assess the adsorption uh, capacity for all this compound toward atrazine. Graphene, firstly, it is a, a very good choice because it has good surface area bare weight and also has tunable band gap. So we use this to this character to activate graphene by different group like carboxylic group and cyanide group and assess its adsorption capacity toward atrazine. We use in our study theoretical calculation tools called DFT theory by using Gaussian program. DFT also is good tool to estimate physical properties and reactions uh, theoretically and give accepted result uh, in comparison with experimental result. The DFT is benefit to give electronic properties of our compound unoptimized and optimized like total dipole moment like uh, uh, like electrostatic map, like ionization energy, band gap, and a lot of information we can get from DFT, which we can help us to expect the reaction and check the capability, the capability of our material, our suggested material to absorb uh, atrazine. From electrostatic map, firstly, we determine the active site which expected to be the best site to adsorption in functionalized graphene and atrazine. And we have different scenario. We put this scenario in calculation with accepted level of calculation in Gauss, and we got uh, uh, the result. The result of the output from this reaction, we got positive, uh, uh, positive adsorption energy, and also we got electrostatic maps, we got uh, 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 FTIR, and we got uh, 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 total dipole moment of uh, product. Uh, the positive absorption energy means that we have successful absorption. The FTIR positive spectrum, that means the formed compound is 
stable. So our conclusion in this study, we can use we can use the activated uh, graphene in absorption of atrazine for water treatment. Shukran lhadrakum. Salam alaikum. This poster showing a theoretical study of the removal of carbamazepine by silicon boron nitride using Gaussian 9 program. This work uses DFT modeling to explore the absorption of carbamazepine on edge and surface of silicon boron nitride. The results show with that a positive absorption energy which indicates that the absorption takes place and there is an absorption and the absorption of uh, edge is higher than a little bit higher than the surface due to active uh, sites at the edge uh, and by calculating HUMO and LUMO it shows that uh, the distribution of HUMO only on silicon boron nitride nanoflakes uh, indicates uh, a good absorption this result was confirmed by molecular electrostatic potential as shown in the figures and characterized by using uh, by uh, UV results which shows a blue shift thank you You are all welcome. Uh, thank you for coming today. I'm Nebiye Kızıl. I'm an assistant professor at Hasan Kalyoncu University in Gaziantep, Turkey. Uh, firstly, I want to thank you to the conference organizers. Uh, today, I will present uh, our paper as a poster. It's about diprotectic solvent liquid phase microextraction powered by ultrasonic system of beta -caraten. Um The research Work is mainly concerned with the extraction of beta carotene, uh, which is a bioactive uh, compound from food and fruit samples. Uh, for this, we use diprotectic solvent. Uh, it consists of uh, tetrabutyl ammonium bromide and deconoic acid. Here, the method here the method was uh, illustrated. Uh, firstly, we synthesize diprotectic solvent uh, by heating method at low temperature. Uh, after that, model solutions were prepared uh, for applying method. For this, uh, 100 microliter uh, diprotectic solvent and uh, 75 microliter uh, tetrahydrofuron is an aprotic solvent uh, were added to the uh, 10 milliliter uh, model solutions. Uh, after ultrasonication and centrifugation, uh, the final solution were analyzed with uh, UV visible spectrophotometer. Uh, in this study, some important parameters uh, such as pH, sample volume, uh, eluent volume, uh, diprotectic solvent time and volume matrix uh, effect uh, have been optimized. Uh, quantitative uh, recoveries were obtained at pH 3. The highest recovery values were obtained uh, by using tetrabutyl ammonium bromide and deconoic acid. Uh, the best centrifugation and sonication time uh, are uh, 3 minutes and uh, 7 minutes, respectively. Uh, for evaluate matrix, um, for evaluate metric effect, matrix effect, uh, some dice and ions were used. All quantitative results were, were listed in table one. Finally, we uh, the method was uh, successfully applied some real samples like pudding, uh, yogurt, uh, chocolate, vitamin, carrot, uh, and milk samples. Uh, and and also addition uh, recovery studies were performed uh, for evaluate uh, to to prove accuracy of method. Uh, we can see from the table two uh, the method was uh, sex successfully applied uh, to a water sample. Thank you for attention. Manuscript title, Spectroscopic, Experimental and Theoretical Studies on N-Ethyl A2-1-Naphthalene-1-OIL, Ethylidine, hydrazine one acarbothioamide Complexes, Structural Characterization, Theoretical DFT, Biological Evaluation, Molecular Property, and Drug Likeness Prediction.
by Ida Alfaraj. In this study, a ligand was synthesized by condensation reaction between 1 naphthalin 1 oil ethan 1 1 and N-ethylhydrazine corbothioamide. Then, a series of CD2, Cu2, and UO2 complexes were prepared via the green ball milling method. All complexes were characterized using IR, UV visible, 1H NMR, 13C NMR, SM, EDX, elemental analysis, and magnetic measurements. All analysis techniques prove the proposed structures. The results from UV visible as well as magnetic data prove the octahedral structure for both Cu2 and UO2 complexes. The antifungal activity results pointed out that both H2 and free ligand and its complexes showed a great resistance against I, flavus, and C, albicans. The isolated solid complexes showed moderate antibacterial activity, while H2 and free ligand has the highest activity. Docking studies showed that H2 and ligand proved to have the highest inhibitor activity of all protein receptors. Cyclic voltammetry studies of Cu2 of were applied in both absence-slash-presence of ligand in 0.1 mkCl at fixed temperature. The data obtained proved that increasing the scan rate resulted in a shift of the anodic peak to a more to positive potential, while a shift to negative potential was noticed for the cathodic peak and linear relation between peak current and scan rate, proposing a diffusion-controlled redox process. Title, Novel Thiazole Carbamothiobenzamide Derivative MN2, NI2, and Cu2 Complexes, Synthesis, Structural Characterization, Computational, and Biological Potency By Ida Alfaraj The thiazole carbamothiobenzamide derivative and its complexes with MN2, Cu2, and NI2 are discussed in this study. Analytical, spectroscopic, and magnetic studies confirm the proposed structures of these substances. DFT confirmed the octahedral construction of all complexes. The ligand functions as a mononegative bidentate in complexes of MN2 and NI, as well as a neutral trident 8 in the Cu2 complex. The ligand had higher antioxidant and cytotoxicity activity. The Cu2 complex showed the strongest inhibitory effect on all bacterial stains under investigation. NI2 complex has the most inhibitory impact on the fungal stain C. calbicans. The experimental anti-cancer findings and molecular docking interactions showed that the ligand has the most inhibitor activity towards cancer cells. This article we synthesized new proyolate ester through stagolic esterification utilize the DMAP catalyst and preparation of different esters which be used in biological and industrial application as displayed in scheme 1. The obtained esters were confirmed through different spectral investigation. Moreover, we elucidation the reaction mechanism of synthesis these esters through DFT analysis. The oacyliso-urea intermediate is produced and then protonated by another molecule of propiolic acid by a nucleophilic attack as represented by FMO as displayed in the figures. Furthermore, we investigated the optimization structures of all proyolate esters and calculated FMO, ESP, dual descriptor, ELF, and LOL analysis to know the highest probability of existing an electron pair on the molecular surface. Moreover, we correlate the optimized structures between NMR, FTIR, and investigate the probability of experimental results with theoretical analysis, and these results lead us to the ester 10 c showed highest reactivity with lowest E value. Moreover, the acetylenic bond moiety showed high degree of reactivity by accepting electrons which reveals the ease of cycloaddition reactions. This article is published in March 2021 in Journal of Molecular Structure. In Rahim, in this poster, we're talking about the impact of the carbon oxide on the structure, optical, and the thermal properties of a lithium lead borate glass system. The glass samples prepared from lithium tetraborate plus different concentration of the carbon oxide on excess of the lead oxide. The samples prepared by quenching method at 1200 degree for two hours. The samples 
measured by density FTIR, XRD, and UV visible spectrophotometer. From figure one, show the amorphous nature of a glass with no peaks. The measured DTA show in figure two the value of TG with TC and TM can be determined from the curve. Uh, it can be noted the only value of TG that represents the more homogeneity of a glass. Other thermal properties like the glass forming ability and the glass stability determined uh, and found that the sample containing to 20 mole percent of the copper oxide uh, have the higher stability that explains the lower crystallization of the glass. Optical properties measured uh, show in figure 3 and they found the transmission decrease with the increase of the copper concentration. In addition, the samples containing two peaks, one in the visible region and in the other in the near IR region, that disappear or decrease with the increase of the copper concentration. Uh, uh, figure 3 could be explained more clearly in uh, figure 6. But now we can use the optical measurement to determine the optical band gap from the absorption coefficient and found that the optical band gap decreases with the increase of the copper concentration uh, and this is the value in accordance with the density and the molar volume that explains the increase of bridging oxygen. Other parameters like number of the copper ions, the polar radius, and the distance between the copper ions were measured from the density uh, calculation. From figure 3, we can explain more clearly in figure 6 as following this. The peak in the visible region represents the glass sample could be used as a green color filter and are more co uh, clearly in the sample containing 10 and 15 mole percent of the copper oxide. Furthermore, the sample with a low concentration of the copper oxide used as a sunglass filter blocking all UV wavelengths and with increasing copper concentration could be used as a cut-off filter blocking all UV and visible wavelengths. My poster is entitled Environmentally Friendly Mesoborous Silicon Oxide with Mixed Fiber Particle Morphology and Large Surface Area for Enhanced dye absorption. Rice straw is made, up, is made up of hemicellulose 19 to 27%, cellulose 32 to 47%, lignin 5 to 24%, and ash 13 to 20%, which are all agriculture with. Rice straw ash is, is considered a green eco-friendly source of silicon oxide. This study focuses on the senses and the characterization of different mesoborous silicon oxide nanostructures derived from rice straw waste material through controlling the pH of the extraction process. X-ray diffraction, Fourier transform infrared, field emission scanning electron microscope, energy dispersion X-ray spectroscopy, high resolution, Transmission electron microscope were used to examine the produced material. Amorphous silica nanostructure prepared at pH equal 3 and 7. While crystalline silica are produced at higher pH equal 9. The pH of extraction has a major effect on the morphology of the resultant nanosilica. The silicon oxide prepared at pH 3 has an irregular shape, while prepared at pH equal 7 is made of distorted spherical particles. But the prepared at pH equal 9 is composed of mixed fiber and spherical particle structure. For pollutant removal, the, BH, the silicon oxide prepared at BH equal 9 have higher absorption compared to prepared at BH equal 3 and 7. Overcoming tea drinking limitation by fortification of iron bioabsorption anemia inhibition. This is Minna Al-Bishlawi, Department of Chemistry, Faculty of Women, Ain Shams University, Cairo, Egypt. T 
Tea is a popular drink with beneficial health properties and a rich source of specific flavonols. The tea extract has high antioxidant activities, evidenced by its ability to kill it ferrous ions. There is a clear indication that tea drinking limits the bioabsorption of iron through complex formation with the phenolic compounds of tea in the gastrointestinal lemon. There are some iron bioabsorption enhancing factors such as pH, ascorbic acid, albumin egg, and sucrose additions. The aim of this study is to investigate the effect of adding these different beneficial compounds to the tea components that inhibits the formation of iron complex with the phenolic compounds to enhance iron bioabsorption and prevent iron, de iron deficiency anemia. This study recommends that acidity is favored at a pH less than 4.5 the sucrose increases the bioabsorption of iron and fortifies green tea than black tea. Also, addition of ascorbic acid before drinking fortifies the iron bioabsorption with green and black tea. The experiment was stock solutions of black tea extract or green tea extract were prepared. 10 ml of freshly prepared ferra sulfate solution was added to differentiate clean breakers containing green tea extract and black tea extract. After complex formation, each solution mixture was digested for about 60 minutes at 40 Celsius. Using water, bath, the influence of pH on the formation of iron complexes and the effect of sucrose, albumin egg, and L-ascorbic acid on the complex formation of tea extract were performed. The experiments were repeated after the formation of the complex between tea extract and the last compound. The absorption of a wavelength of 563 nanometer with green tea extract and black tea extract are discussed. The conclusion is, the major problem of tea drinking could be overcome by adding some fortifications to the tea, which limits the complex formation, thus enhances the iron bioabsorption. This could be verified at pH lower than 4.5. Addition of 2 milliliters of sucrose or egg albumin also enhances this fortification process. Presence of ascorbic acid limits the, the iron tea complex formation in both cases of black and green tea. A volume of 2 milliliter ascorbic acid was sufficient for this purpose at all temperatures. To the same extent, adding addition of those fortifications to tea bags will overcome the problem of iron deficiency of tea drink. Isonicot in a hydrazide calcone and its knee complexes corrosion inhibitors during acid cleaning. Theoretical and experimental approaches the authors. Dr. Adel Asha, Dr. Asma Abolnaga, Dr. Asma M. Fahim, presented by Dr. Asma Abolnaga Associate Professor Ain Shams University, Chemistry Department. Faculty of Women, Egypt. The introduction. The isonicot in ahydrazidechalcone derivatives presented in this study have already been characterized in the literature, and their antibacterial, anti-cancer and anti-inflammatory effects have been investigated. However, previous studies did not examine their metal complexes as corrosion inhibitors, which, to the best of the author's knowledge, is the first time that they have been synthesized as a corrosion inhibitor during acid cleaning. The aim of this work is, investigate isonicot in a hydrazide calcone derivative and its nickel complexes corrosion inhibitors during acid cleaning of MS in 0.5 mHCl by some experimental and theoretical approaches. Scheme 1 showed the synthesis of calcone and its complex. Figure 1 and 2 showed FITR and HNMR of the synthesized CH, A, uh, and CHN, B. Figure 3 showed the optimized molecular structure of, CHN. CHN figure 4 showed weight loss of mild steel in 0.5 mHCl at 30 degrees Celsius in presence of different concentrations of CH inhibitor and CHN. Conclusions The synthesized novel knee complex of isonicot in a hydrazide from calcone elucidated by spectral analysis, showed inhibition efficiency for MS during acid cleaning in 0.5 mHCl. This inhibition was confirmed by computational analysis using the DFTB3PW91-LANL2DZ basis set and showed excellent compatibility between the knee complex and the ligand. Thank you for listening. I am Dr. Dina Issa. My topic will be effect of molybdenum trioxide nanoparticle addition on the structure and optical properties of cellulose acetate. Casting method was used to prepare cellulose estate and cellulose estate blended with different concentration of molybdenum trioxide nanoparticles. 
X-ray diffraction result indicates the amorphous nature of pure cellulose state film. The addition of molybdenum trioxide nanoparticle uh, resulted in partial, partially crystallized of symbol. Size strain plot method calculation was used to analyze X-ray data of the higher concentration of molybdenum trioxide nanoparticle. That was indicate the, the, nano, uh, the, the molybdenum trioxide was in nano range. Tau equation was used for the analysis of optical transition of curing in cellulose state and cellulose state blended with different concentration nanoparticles. The optical transition in the film are indirect in nature. There was observed two energy gap which corresponding to homo lomo gap and onset gap. A gradual decrease in the energy band gap was observe, observed which was for the homo lomo band gap 3.234 pure film and was decreased for the higher concentration of the nanoparticle to 2.89 electron volt and for the onset band gap it was decreased from 1.3 to 0.87 electron volt for the higher concentration um, molybdenum trioxide nanoparticle. This decrease can mainly be attributed to the increase of concentration of the localized state in the band structure with increasing the concentration of molybdenum trioxide nanoparticle. The classical single oscillator model was used to analyze normal region of the refractive dispersion. Single oscillator model um, was used uh, and the oscillator energy and dispersion energy was calculated. It was found that the oscillation energy decreased with increasing concentration of molybdenum trioxide nanoparticle. Also, uh, it, it was observed that the dispersion energy was increased by increasing the concentration. There was observed a difference between the values of high and finite dielectric constant and lattice dielectric constant, which may be due to the contribution, the contribution of free carrier concentration. Arbach energy was calculated and was observed to increase with increasing molybdenum trioxide nanoparticles. Muller extinction coefficient was calculated for studded symbol and from its Gaussian profile, some optical parameters are calculated like electric dipole strength and the oscillator, st oscillator strength. The spectral distribution of real and imaginary part of the electric constant loss factor are studied. Dumping frequency was calculated from the slope of relation between lambda cube and epsilon 2. I will present a poster for my research title, Rare Earth Oxide Functionalized the Recycled Pet. Preparation, Characterization, Optical and Dielectric Properties. This is in cooperation between Helwyn University, the National Research Center, and Cairo University. In this study, recycled polyethylene terephthalate, PET, was chopped up, ground, and mechanically and that converts PET waste into powder in different steps and mixing with rare earth lay 203 in different concentrations, 0, 1, 2, 4, 8% wet tea. The model structures for the interaction of PET with LA203 were studied using the Gaussian O09. The TDM and energy results exposed that the TDM changed from 2.4256 to 3.9288 dBi for PET, functionalized with lay 203 is clear that lay 203 groups increase the PET reactivity as TDM increases interaction where its reactivity is increased. The band gap energy for the terminal interaction increased and changed from 0 0.2754 and structure morphology studied and characterized using X-ray diffraction, XRD, FTIR. 
The XRD results exposed the amorphous nature of PET, but the crystallinity of the samples increased with the LA203 additives. Optical properties of the samples were studied using a diffuse reflectance spectroscopy, presented that the band gap energies found to decrease form 3.82 EV for PET blend to 3.11 EV for different concentration of the LA203 grafted PET blend. Additionally, the dielectric properties as function of frequency, 1 K to 200 Kierkegaard and temperature, 30 to 100 Takers OC, were studied and discussed. The results confirmed the additive of Lay 203 to the PT enhanced the dielectric properties of the PT to be a candidate for the application of energy stork. The study aimed to satisfy the 3R, reduce, recycle, reuse, concept to execute the management of waste properly. Research methodology. The research included two parts, theoretical and experimental work. As for the theoretical part, the model structures for the interaction of PET with LA203 were studied using the Gaussian 0910 at the Molecular Spectroscopy and Modeling Unit, National Research Center, Cairo, Egypt. The model structures were optimized and calculated using the 2B3 LIPSDD11 model molecules for the studied structures, whereas the three units of PET, termed as 3U PET, and LA203 interacted with three units of PET through the hydrogen bond of the OH of the first PET unit, termed as LA203 quar PET. Total dipole moment, TDM, and molecular electrostatic potential maps, MSP, were computed for the PET structure. Table 1 confirms that the electronic characteristics of PT change due to functionalization. TDM changed to 3.9288 dBi for PT functionalized with LA203. Considering the TDM of base PET, it is clear that groups increase the PT reactivity as TDM increases interaction where its reactivity is increased. On the other hand, the band gap energy for the terminal interaction increased and changed to 0.2765 EV for PET functionalized with LA203. Figure 3 shows the calculated MSP maps for PET with LA203. The MSP maps showed that the charges were redistributed within the structure and localized at the interaction site with increased intensity of the red regions. Thus, the electronegativity within the PT structure is increased in the case of functionalization with LA203 as the intensity of the red regions increases. All these changes confirm that the functionalization of PT with LA203 enhances its reactivity and can then be used as an energy storage. Quantitative structure activity, relationship, QSAR, calculation of PET with LA203. The values in Table 2 in particular hydrogen bond donor count is 3 and hydrogen bond acceptor count is 12 indicated that the existence LA203 with PET, it increases the reactivity of PET. This results confirm those obtained by MESP. This, and to ensure these results, FTIR analysis, UV vis spectra, X-ray diffraction, XRD, and dielectric properties, X-ray diffraction. These are data of XRD indicate that the increase of La Oxida led to an increase in the forming of crystalline structures and converting the morphology of PT from an amorphous structure to a crystalline structure. These data also indicate an improvement in the other properties of PET with Lao composites. F-tier Fig 5 shows the F-tier spectra of PET with Lay 203 at 1, 2, 4, and 8 WT percent, recorded in the range from 400, 4,000 Sion Kyogamaridu 1. For PET plastic has the three bands found in the spectrum of PET. This is seen in Fig 4. Three peaks are C, E, and F. The CEO stretch for this polymer is seen at 1712 cm1, the CCO stretch is at 1239 cm1, and the OCC stretch falls at 1088 cm1. These peaks are oftentimes the three most intense peaks in the spectrum of an ester. The absorption band at 621 cm1 may arise from lay OH vibration, and the small peaks at 486 cm1 may result from the characteristic metal oxide lay stretching vibration. The peak's intensity increasing with increasing late 203 content.
However, a new peak at 621 centimeter 1, 628 centimeter 1, 628 centimeter 1, and 639 centimeter 1 in peak shift was observed from 443 centimeter 1 to 428 centimeter 1, which that Piet with LA203 have an interaction that improves their properties. The UV Vis Spectra Figure 6 presents the plot of pure Piet with the present alteration of LA203 at 1, 2, 4, and 8 WT percent. Gap energy is calculated for pure PIT and the nano composite and listed in PIT has only one direct band gap, which is equal to 3.82 EV as shown in FIG. With different weight percentages of lay 203 at 1, 2, 4, and 8 water cent, to PET reduces the homo lumo band gap of PET from 3.82 to 3.19 EV during the displacement of the adsorption edge and the decrease in gap energy with increasing content confirms the presence of an interaction between the LA203 and the PT polymers. Dielectric Properties Figure 7 presented the dielectric properties as function of frequency at room temperature, 30 OC to 100 OC for the samples, PT and LA203, PET, LA203, 1, 2, 4, and 8 per sound. The dielectric constant, A, is the value to express the energy stored in the sample. The value of the dielectric constant, A, was decreasing with the doping values. The frequency does not have impact on the value of EC, but the lay 203 contents has affected the values of the dielectric constant. The highest constant is for the 8% up what? Lay 203 sample. But the lowest value is for the sample doped with 1 and 2% WT of lay 203. The dielectric loss, E, 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 is the energy loss inside the sample, as in figure 1b. The dielectric loss at low frequency is higher than the dielectric loss at higher frequency. This means that the dipole moment can rotate well at lower frequency, 1500 Hz, but it does not rotate with the applied field at higher frequency, 1500 Hz. Figure 7c shows the tangent loss factor tan d r c u e a d e the ratio of the dielectric loss energy to the dielectric energy stored in the sample. Here, the tangent loss is almost constant with the frequency at frequency higher than 2 degrees of hertz for all samples containing rear earth oxida, Le203. The concentration of the Le203 does not affect much on the tangent loss. Frequency is plotted in figure 1, D. The SAC values is enhanced only for the concentration of the sample with 0.4% wit T of lay 203. The value of the conductivity increased from 10.6 for it to be 10 to 1 for the 0.4% wit T of lay 203 sample. It seems to be this concentration, the optimum value of lay 203, to be doped in the peat. A novel green biosensors approach and structural characterizations of silver iron bimetallic nanoparticles using the red alga galaxy rari goza. By Ahlam Saleh Shahawi, Department of Botany, Faculty of Science, Mansoura University, under supervision, uh, Professor Dr. Ilham Mahmoud Ali, Professor of Environmental Science, Faculty of Fish Resources, Seward University, and the Professor Dr. Ashraf Said, Professor of Microbiology, Faculty of Science, Mansoura University. The marine algae Galaxiria rigosa was collected by hand from uh, Zafarona Beach uh, on the Red Sea. The present study mediated green, fast, and environmental friendly senses of silver iron biometallic nanoparticles using an aqueous extract of seaweed galaxy rigosa which act as reducing and efficient stabilizer agents uv spectroscopy and FTIR confirmed formation of silver iron bimetallic nanoparticles the crystalline structure of nanoparticles was identified by xrd and selected area diffraction pattern the biosensized nanoparticles were small spherical shaped and well dispersed uh, as observed using transmission electron and microscope and SEM electron microscope. This eco-friendly and biogenic technology produces stable nanoparticles suitable for a variety of sectors. A 
algae mediated sensors and the structural characterization of iron nanoparticles using Galaxy Rigosa Seaweed by Ahlam Saleh Shahawi, Department of Botany, Faculty of Science, Mansoura University, under supervision of Professor Dr. Ilham Mahmoud Ali, Professor of Environmental Science, Faculty of Fish Resources, Suez University, and the Professor Dr. Ashraf Said, Professor of Microbiology, Faculty of Science, Mansoura University. In the current research work, a green sense approach were used to synthesize uh, iron nanoparticles that were cost effective and environmentally friendly. The aqueous extract of Galaxia rigosa uh, contains biomolecules which serve as both anti agglomeration and reducing agent. UV spectroscopy, FTIR, TEM, selected area, diffraction pattern, EDX, SEM, and XRD. Analysis uh, confirmed the formation of iron nanoparticles. This green method of synthesizing iron nanoparticles could also be extended to fabricate other industrial and import uh, important uh, metal oxides. Chemical composition, antioxidant and antimicrobial activities of Anabasis articulata methanolic extract Muhammad F. Hafaz. Introduction Large amount of wild medicinal plants is found in most desert lands in Egypt that can produce a wide range of chemical compounds that have many biological functions. Also, when ingested by humans, several of these plants provide long-term health benefits and treat human diseases successfully. Schwab et al. 2008. Ahmed et al. 2018. To investigate the biochemical elements responsible for the biological effects, the current study set out to 1. Characterize the chemical components of the Egyptian ecospecies of Anabasis articulata methanol extract by GCMS, and 2. Evaluate the antioxidant, antibacterial, and anti-cancer activities of Anabasis articulata methanol extract. Material and Methods 1. Anabasis articulata was gathered from a wild population in the Egyptian desert. The plant material was cleansed, air-dried for several days at room temperature until completely dry, and then ground into powder. 2. Preparation of plant extracts and phytochemical analysis of selected plant species. 3. Purification and characterization of the most active compounds by GC per Mega Siemens. 4. Determination of the prepared extracts and active constituents for their biological activities, antimicrobial activity, antioxidant, and anti-cancer potentiality. Results and discussion GCMS analysis. The volatile components of the methanol extract of Anabasis articulata were accurately characterized by GCMS analysis. The most abundant molecule being palmitic acid, 12.57% isolated after 21.65 minutes followed by 3, 14, 16 trihydroxycard 20, 22, enolide, 7.92%, and STIGMAST5EN3OL, 3-alpha, 24S, 7.91%. The results of GC per Mega Siemens analysis have also specified four main classes of the components categorized as fatty acids and esters, 57.78%, hydrocarbons, 23.89%, steroids, 14.84%, and terpenes, 6.46%. Antioxidant activity. According to the results, the extracts of Anabasis articulata exhibited antioxidant activity in a dose-dependent manner, P is less than or equal to 0.05, which was comparable with ascorbic acid as a reference standard. Based on the IC50 values, the aqueous extract of Anabasis articulata has an antioxidant activity of 33.64 mg per milliliter. Cytotoxic activity. The significant cytotoxic potential of Anabasis articulata having IC50 microgram per milliliter. Values 62.35 micrograms per milliliter, 
for HEPG 2 cell lines, 73.64 for MCF 7 cell lines, 61.34 for PC 3 cell lines, and greater than 100 microgram per milliliter for normal cells. Conclusion. Finally, the phytochemical analysis proved that Anabasis articulata were relatively rich in bioactive secondary chemical compounds. Regarding biological activity, Anabasis articulata could be a source of antioxidant, antimicrobial and cytotoxic activities. Chemical composition, in vitro assessment of antioxidant and cytotoxic activities of methanolic extract of Avicennia marina. By Hoda Osman. Introduction. Halophytes are plants that are naturally adapted to salinity and are considered as models to understand stress tolerance in plants. To overcome harsh conditions halophytes are synthesis of secondary metabolites, such as phenolic compounds, saponins, and alkaloids. These molecules have a crucial protective role in the plant and exhibit relevant bioactivities, including antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and anti-tumoral, which are linked to beneficial therapeutic properties and could help explain the use of some halophytes in traditional medicine and as food Avicennia marina Forsk. Veer, one of the most abundant and common mangrove species, is used in traditional medicine for the treatment of different diseases, including rheumatism and smallpox. Material and Methods Avicennia marina was collected from coast of Red Sea of Safaga, Egypt. The plant material was cleaned, dried at room temperature for several days till complete dryness and ground into powder. Preparation of plant extracts and phytochemical analysis of selected plant species. Purification and characterization of the most active compounds by GC-MS. Results and Discussion GCMS analysis, the volatile components of the methanol extract of Avicennia marina were accurately characterized by GCMS analysis. The most abundant molecule being palmitic acid, 12.57%, isolated after 21.65 minutes, followed by 3, 14, 16, a trihydroxycard, 20, 22, enolide, 7.92%, and stigmast, 5, 10, 3, ol, 3, alpha, 24S, 7.91%. The results of GC-MS analysis have also specified four main classes of the components categorized as fatty acids and esters, 48.78%, hydrocarbons, 26.89%, steroids, 16.84%, and terpenes, 7.46%. Antioxidant activity. According to the results, the extracts Avicennia marina exhibited antioxidant activity in a dose-dependent manner, P less than or equal to 0.05, which was comparable with ascorbic acid as a reference standard. Based on the IC50 values, the aqueous extract of Avicennia marina has an antioxidant activity of 37.16 mg per milliliter, cytotoxic activity, the significant cytotoxic potential of Avicennia marina having IC50, G-ML, values 61.39 G-ML, for HEPG, 2 cell lines, 76.52 for MCF, 7 cell lines, 60.33 for PC3 cell lines, and greater than 100 G-ML for normal cells. Conclusion, finally, the phytochemical analysis proved that Avicennia marina were relatively rich in bioactive secondary chemical compounds. Regarding biological activity, Avicennia marina could be a source of antioxidant, antimicrobial and cytotoxic activities. Structural fluorescence and the magnetic properties of chromium protein substituted cobalt, manganese, chromium fluoride nanoparticles, uh, at x from 0 up to 1 uh, by Reham Kamal Abdul Hamid, the Orphan Site Physics Department, Faculty of One for Arts, Science and Education, uh, Professor Muhammad Ghazza, uh, Basic Science Department, Marriage Institute of Engineering and Modern Technology. Uh, <coughs> in the present work, uh, we, uh, we prepared uh, a series of chromium substituted uh, cobalt, manganese, chromium fluoride nanoparticles. Uh, from x uh, equal 0 up to 1 uh, with an interval 0.2 using a sol gel self ignition root uh, method. Uh, the, uh, the powder calcinated at uh, 800 uh, degrees centigrade for 6 an hour. Uh, the structure <coughs> properties of uh, samples were carried out by XRD. Uh, FTIR and the high resolution transmission electron microscope. Uh, from the XRD results, uh, <coughs> we found that uh, the cubic spinel structure with this group FD3M uh, were formed for all samples uh, with a significant ratio of hematite, which decreased gradually by increasing chromium concentration. Uh, moreover, uh, the chromium ion substitution uh, caused uh, <coughs> a significant reduction in crystallite size. Uh, from uh, 44.75 to uh, 28.65 uh, nanometers, uh, 
اف تي اي ار سبيكترم كونفيرم ذا فورميشن اوف فيكس كروسبوندنج تو ميتال اوكسجين بوند ويتش شيفت تو هاير ويف لينس from the high resolution transformation electron microscope results uh, it is clear that the all samples will crystallize in nanoparticles uh, with soft agglomeration may be due to higher calcination temperature and the magnetic uh, and the magnetic particles it is also observed that uh, the particle size decreased from 62.5 to 44.17 nanometer uh, which uh, in a good accordance to XRD result uh, magnetic properties revealed that the, uh, all magnetic properties such as saturation magnetization remnant and uh, coercive field decreased gradually by increasing chromium concentration the saturation magnetization decreased from 67.92 uh, 10.5 uh, electromagnetic unit per gram a strong and sharp red emission Uh, observed at uh, 600 nanometers and uh, weak UV emission at uh, 324 nanometers are obtained from the fluorescence spectra uh, which observed after excitation at uh, 285 nanometers. The chromium substitution enhances the red uh, emission uh, which has a maximum intensity observed for the sample for X uh, at uh, 0.5 indicating that uh, is a less uh, defect in the matrix due to chromium substitution. GCMS analysis of phytocomponents in the methanol extract of Launaea mucronata and its potential antioxidant and cytotoxic Yasser al Amir introduction plants have been described as the oldest friends of man due to their value as sources of food, shelter, and medicines. According to estimates, by the 18th century, 80% of all medicines came from plants. Medicinal plants are an integral part of the human society for disease control since dawn civilization. In order to investigate the biochemical elements responsible for the biological effects, the current study set out to 1. Characterize the chemical components of the Egyptian ecospecies of Launaea mucronata methanol extract by GCMS, and 2. Evaluate the antioxidant, antibacterial, and anti-cancer activities of Launaea mucronata methanol extract. Material and Methods 1. Launaea mucronata was collected from naturally growing population in coastal desert, deltaic Mediterranean coast, of Egypt. The plant material was cleaned, dried at room temperature for several days till complete dryness and ground into powder. 2. Preparation of plant extracts and phytochemical analysis of selected plant species. 3. Purification and characterization of the most active compounds by GC per mega Siemens. 4. Determination of the prepared extracts and active constituents for their biological activities, antimicrobial activity, antioxidant, and anti-cancer potentiality. Results and discussion GCMS analysis. The volatile components of the methanol extract of Launaea mucronata were accurately characterized by GCMS analysis. The most abundant molecule being palmitic acid, 12.57%. Isolated after 21.65 minutes, followed by 3, 14, 16 TRIHYDROXYCARD 20, 22, enolide, 7.92%, and STIGMAST 5EN3OL, 3 alpha, 24S, 7.91%. The results of GC per mega Siemens analysis have also specified four main classes of the components categorized as fatty acids and esters, 48.78%, hydrocarbons, 26.89%, steroids, 16.84%, and terpenes, 7.46%. Antioxidant activity. According to the results, the extracts of Launaea mucronata exhibited antioxidant activity in a dose-dependent manner. P is less than or equal to 0.05, which was comparable with ascorbic acid as a reference standard. Based on the IC50 values, the aqueous extract of Launaea mucronata has an antioxidant activity of 31.70 mg per milliliter. Cytotoxic activity. The significant cytotoxic potential of Launaea mucronata having IC50 microgram per milliliter 
values 59.54 micrograms per milliliter. For HEPG2 cell lines, 72.47 for MCF7 cell lines, 59.90 for PC3 cell lines, and greater than 100 microgram per milliliter for normal cells. Conclusion. Finally, the phytochemical analysis proved that l mucronata were relatively rich in bioactive secondary chemical compounds. Regarding biological activity, l mucronata could be a source of antioxidant, antimicrobial and cytotoxic activities. Investigation of antibacterial, anti-cancer, antioxidant, and methyl blue, MB, catalytic degradation of the biosynthesized zinc sulfide slash zinc oxide nanoparticles using fusarium oxysporum. By Aya Aboelnga 2D Research Group, Physics Faculty of Science, Mansura University, Mansura, Egypt Nanoparticles have been utilized in various fields. The synthesis of zinc oxide ZNO, zinc sulfide ZNS, and ZNO ZNS composite nanoparticles was synthesized via Fusarium oxysporum. Theph oxysporum is a large fungus species complex composed of both plant and human pathogens. In this study, we represent the utilization of fungal extract to synthesize ZNS slash ZNO composite nanoparticles. The aqueous extracts obtained from F. oxysporum were employed for this purpose. F. oxysporum was cultivated on potato dextrose agar, PDA, medium, and after the incubation period, the fungal biomass was separated from the media by filtration, and any remaining media residue was thoroughly removed by washing the collected fungal biomass three times in sterile distilled water. Then, 10 g of wet fungal biomass was at fungal biomass was added to 100 milliliters of a 5x103m aqueous solution of ZNSO4, 7H2O, and incubated at 27 degrees Celsius, 200 RPM for 96H in dark conditions, the reaction solution was filtered, and filtrate containing nanoparticles was dried at 70 degrees Celsius was dried at 70 degrees Celsius overnight. The ZNS slash ZNO nanocomposite was characterized using Fourier Transform Infrared Spectroscopy, F. Good afternoon everybody. Optical, physical, and gamma ray synthesis, computational evaluation and molecular docking of ninhydronquinoxalan shift-based derivatives. By Dahlia Onzi. Introduction, quinoxalines are a key area of interest for the inquiry due to its straightforward chemical production and biological actions. The antimicrobials echinomycin, actinomycin, and levomycin, the active or basic substance is quinoxalin. Problem statement, quinoxalin derivatives had been synthesized and tested as antimicrobial agents and computational studies had been used to boost experimental results. Methodology, quinoxalin derivatives, 5AD, 7, 9, were synthesized, then screening for antimicrobial activity by well diffusion method against S. typhi, K. pneumonia, B. subtilis, L. monocytogenase, E. coli, and the fungus Candida albicans. The minimum inhibitory concentration, MIC, was determined by making different concentrations of the tested compounds dissolved in DMSO. For computational studies, prediction of activity spectra for substance is online software in the drug innovation and development environment. Predict the inhibition mechanisms and the most suitable targets for the synthesized compounds by molecular autodoc docking using PYRX software. The structure of ligand and its complexes were transformed into PDB file format using PyMol software. Results in discussion 1. Synthesis and characterization of quinoxalin derivatives, the condensation reaction of indenoquinoxalin 11 1 with the corresponding aromatic amine in boiling ethanol containing a catalytic amount of glacial acetic acid of 40 compounds 5 AD, where their structures were confirmed by spectroscopic analyses, the attempt to synthesis of derivative 7, and carbothioamide derivative 9, could achieve viaduct the condensation reaction of quinoxalin derivative 3 with phenyl. Hydrazine 6, and biosemicarboside 8, in scheme 1. The proton NMR spectrum of compound 5D, thiol proton appears as singlet signal at 7.46, figure 2. 2. Detection of antimicrobial activity. The compound 7 had antimicrobial effect against all organism, but other compounds had effect against some pathogens, table 1. 4. Molecular docking. By using molecular docking analysis in order to clarify the exact binding sites and to understand the mode of action for the best biologically active compounds. Based on molecular docking analysis, Table 2. The compounds have polar interaction with some amino acids as shown in Figure 3. 
Conclusions, six quinoxalin derivatives, 5AD, 7, and 9, were synthesized and structurally confirmed through spectroscopic analyses. Computational simulation using PASS online predictor suggested that some compounds might have optimistic antimicrobial activities. Antimicrobial activity of quinoxalin derivatives was investigated. Compound 7 has encountered a significant antimicrobial activity. Molecular docking of the synthesized compounds shows their binding affinities, polar and hydrophobic interactions against the active pockets of bacterial and fungal protein targets. Modeling optimization synthesis of CU backslash ZN bimetallic nanooxides for using in Congo red removal and control of pathogenic microorganisms by my M. Taha asterisk 1 in the last 20 years. The field of nanoscience has developed to become the promising field of nanotechnology. Nanoparticles send piece a size are in ranging from 0 to 100 nanometers diameter. Due to the unique magnetic, optical, and electrical properties of nanoparticles, there is a lot of interest in their production and applications. As a result, NPs have shown considerable promise in the field of environmental remediation. Bimetallic nanoparticles were produced by combining salts of two metals with the help of a reducing agent, which resulted in the production of new properties due to the synergy between the two metals. Green synthesis is a high-yield and eco-friendly path for the nanoparticles preparation. Problem Statement Water contamination by organic dyes and pathogenic bacteria has a negative impact on human health. Bimetallic nanoparticles are promising materials in pathogen elimination and dye removal methodology. CUO slash CNO bimetallic NPs were synthesized using fusarium oxysporum extract and the conditions which affect the synthesis of NPs were optimized using CCD model. Antimicrobial activity was tested by well diffusion method and minimum inhibition concentration. The biosorption of Congo Red CR dye using the biosynthesized CUO slash CNO NPs was studied. The biosorption studies were carried out at different time intervals and different initial dye concentration. Results and discussion 1. Biosynthesis of CUO slash CNO bimetallic nanoparticles was occurred by using the extract of fungus Fusarium oxysporum. The optimal concentrations of bimetallic CUO backslash CNO NPs were pH, shaking, salt concentration and incubation time recorded values of 7, 140 rpm. 5 mm and 48 H respectively. The results were analyzed by OneWay ANOVA to evaluate statistical significance for each factor. 2.CUO backslash CNO NPs affected gram VE more than gram plus VE bacteria. The inhibitory effect of NPs may be connected to DNA structural disintegration or enzyme activity disruption induced by the generation of highly reactive species like OH and O22 plus where OH, NO22 plus damage the cell membrane and cell wall. Point three out the physicochemical parameters effects on the Congo red sorption onto the biosynthesized CUO backslash CNO. NPs were investigated. Conclusions. Bimetallic CUO slash CNO nanoparticles were successfully synthesized by using a cost-effective, eco-friendly method. The biosynthesized CUO backslash CNO NPs has good antimicrobial activity against both gram-positive, gram-negative bacteria and fungus candida albicans. Congo red sorption was investigated by using bimetallic CUO slash CNO NPs. Poster number 36. Presented by Dr. Hen as a title DFT study of DGEB epoxy resin nanocomposite with functionalized GCNT and C60 with Thai Otwo as corrosion inhibition. The aerospace environment is well known for its harsh conditions, such as high temperatures, vacuum, micrometeoroids, and space debris. Surfaces and materials exposed to this environment are suffering from corrosion. These properties have a significant impact on the design and construction of spacecraft and aircraft components. Accordingly, aerospace construction needs materials with high strength and stiffness to resist these conditions. As a result, it was proposed to improve the corrosion resistance features of DGEP epoxy resins via the addition of carbon-based nanomaterials such as fullerene, carbon nanotubes, and graphene functionalized with titanium dioxide to have a long lifetime in the aerospace environment. Molecular modeling was used to investigate the influence of nanocomposition on electrical and corrosion properties of epoxy resin using the density function theory calculations. For examining the improved characteristics, highest occupied molecular orbital and lowest unoccupied molecular orbital total dipole moment band gap energy and molecular electrostatic potential were calculated for all model structures. 
The results showed that functionalized G with Thai Otwo is the most impacted nanocomposite with epoxy resins as the electronic characteristics were reduced from 5.389 to 0. 226 CV also, the corrosion parameters were calculated and confirmed an improvement according to composition. After collecting the studied parameters together, epoxy resin slash G slash Thai Otwo nanocomposite might be employed as a corrosion inhibitor in aerospace. Presented by Islam Linda. This is paper hydrogen storage capacities of various carbon materials and their synthesis have been summarized and reviewed. Based on several investigations reported in the literature, it's observed that the storage of hydrogen in solid form is most suitable options to overcome the challenges like it is storage and transportation. In this form, hydrogen can be stored by absorption like metal hydrides and complex hydrides or by adsorption like carbon materials. All hydrogen storage materials presented, the carbon materials are attractive due to their high specific surface area, chemical stability, low cost, and plentifully available. Initial work beginning with carbon nanotubes and has expanded to including wide range variety of SV2 hybrids, carbon, on, on, uh, carbon structures including graphene and spherical chlorine. Hydrogen absorption carbon materials follows, follows physical absorption by weak bundle mass forces, which have absorption in solubility lower than 10 kJ mole. The insolubility of the hydrogen absorption should be between 20 and 30 kJ mole. So, finally, to increase the absorption in solubility, we should add in external elements to carbon absorbent as transition metals, alkali and alkyl earth metals, and nuclear atoms. These metals doping can resolve the problem of weak bending between hydrogen and the most materials, and they thereby enhance the storage capacity. And the bending material atoms could turn their electronic and catalytic properties that make carbon-based materials be prospective for this application. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I am Nora Yahya Sheikh Assistant Lecturer at Faculty of Electronic Engineering Gemnofia University We could do the zinc oxide nanostructures with cobalt and iron by sol gel technique for different mole percent of cobalt and a fixed iron concentration of 5 mole percent By using X-ray diffractometer we noted that the diffraction patterns match the standard card of the hexagonal zinc oxide worth side structure without any impurity phases and the calculated crystalline size values increased with increasing cobalt concentrations. From the high resolution transmission electron microscopic graphs we found that the average particle size nearly close to the size obtained from XRD ranging from 32 nanometer to 44 nanometer. It is known that pure zinc oxide is a diamagnetic material, so we doped it with transition elements to improve its magnetic behavior. By using VSCM, we found that all the samples display a ferromagnetic trend at room temperature, and we returned its source to an increase in oxygen vacancies which develop bound magnetic polarons. As shown in figure 5, the magnetization saturation and remanent magnetization are increased. We used E4991 B impedance analyzer with frequency range from 1 MHz to 1 GHz to measure dielectric parameters. The dielectric constant, real part and imaginary part decreased with an increase in cobalt concentrations. It may be owing to the small dielectric polarizability of cobalt ions compared to zinc. The conductivity re also reduced by increasing the cobalt concentration. The rise in dopant concentration enhances the concentration of defect ions, which helps the creation of grain boundary defect barrier and obstruct the flow of charge carriers. From our results, we suggest our samples as an excellent candidate material for use in spindronics devices. Thank you for your listening.
chemical composition of Flomus flocosa essential oil and its potential antioxidant, antimicrobial and cytotoxic activities. Muhammad S. Sultan introduction Flomus species have been used in folk medicine to treat a variety of conditions including diabetes, gastric ulcer, hemorrhoids, inflammation, and wounds, Sajadi et al., 2018. Flomus flocosa is a member of the Lamiaceae family, which has over 3,000 species and 200 genera. Several research have discussed the antioxidant, antidiabetic, and honey production properties of the Lamiaceae which grows in diverse parts of the world. El Mokasabi, 2014. Material and Methods 1. Flomus flocosa was gathered from a wild population in the Egyptian desert. The plant material was cleansed, air-dried for several days at room temperature until completely dry, and then ground into powder. 2. Preparation of plant extracts and phytochemical analysis of selected plant species. 3. Purification and characterization of the most active compounds by GC per mega Siemens. 4. Determination of the prepared extracts and active constituents for their biological activities, antimicrobial activity, antioxidant, and anti-cancer potentiality. Results and discussion GCMS analysis. The volatile components of the methanol extract of Flomus flocosa were accurately characterized by GCMS analysis. The most abundant molecule being palmitic acid, 17.88%, isolated after 21.65 minutes followed by 3, 14, 16 trihydroxycard 20, 22, enolide, 6.28%, and STIGMAST5EN3OL, 3-alpha, 24S, 9.33%. The results of GC per mega Siemens analysis have also specified four main classes of the components categorized as fatty acids and esters, 53.99%, hydrocarbons, 18.69%, steroids, 10.22%, and terpenes, 8.57%. Antioxidant activity. According to the results, the extracts of Anabasis articulata exhibited antioxidant activity in a dose dependent manner. P is less than or equal to 0.05, which was comparable with ascorbic acid as a reference standard. Based on the IC50 values, the aqueous extract of Anabasis articulata has an antioxidant activity of 33.64 mg per milliliter. Cytotoxic activity. The significant cytotoxic potential of Flomus flocosa having IC50 microgram per milliliter, values 66.22 micrograms per milliliter, for HEPG2 cell lines, 70.51 for MCF7 cell lines, 63.59 for PC3 cell lines, and greater than 100 microgram per milliliter for normal cells. Conclusion. Finally, the phytochemical analysis proved that Flomus flocosa was relatively rich in bioactive secondary chemical compounds. Regarding biological activity, Flomus flocosa could be a source of antioxidant, antimicrobial and cytotoxic activities. Optical and physical characteristics of chitosan silver vanadate nanocomposites presented by Hagar Ibrahim. In many advanced sciences, such as energy, medicine, biotechnology, and other branches, nanotechnology has become an effective and critical tool that involves the design and synthesis of materials at nanoscale levels, creating new materials with enhanced properties. Polymer-based nanocomposites have attracted considerable attention recently due to their unique physical and chemical properties, which make them promising candidates for various applications, besides their antibacterial effect. Chitosan is a natural biopolymer derived from chitin, a biopolymer found in the exoskeleton of crustaceans such as shrimp and crabs. When chitosan is combined with silver vanadate nanoparticles, it forms a polymer-based nanocomposite with enhanced physical properties and antibacterial effects. In addition, the antibacterial activity of silver vanadate nanoparticles is enhanced when incorporated into chitosan, resulting in a material with potent antibacterial properties. Chitosan with silver vanadate nanocomposite thin polymeric films were successfully synthesized via ordinary solution casting technique utilizing water as a common solvent. 
Variable mass fractions of the synthesized nanoparticles were added to the virgin polymeric samples, their structure and characteristics were investigated using optical and physical characterization techniques. The morphology of silver vanadate nanorods was analyzed using transmission electron microscopy. The images revealed that the nanorods were highly uniform in size and shape, with an average length of 100 nanometers and a diameter of 20 nanometers. Exhibited a well-defined crystalline structure. Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy was utilized to analyze the functional groups in the nanocomposite material and study the interaction between the chitosan and the silver vanadate nanoparticles. In the spectral range of 400 to 4000, thin films of pure chitosan and other samples of mixed chitosan with various mass fractions of silver vanadate were assessed. With increasing silver vanadate content, an increase in band intensity at 600 cm per negative was seen. The swelling behavior of the synthesized samples was calculated by using an immersion method, in which way dry amount of each sample was immersed in six different buffer solutions. The graphing figure shows that the swelling ratio decreases with the increase in concentration or pH of each thin film material. The obtained results provide valuable insights into the optical properties of the composite material, which can be useful for potential medical applications. Also investigated the biological and swelling ratio data of the thin film, indicating the potential of the composite material for biomedical applications. The combination of silver vanadate and chitosan matrix can be a promising candidate for various medical applications. Hello everyone. Welcome to our fifth international conference on molecular modeling and spectroscopy. I am Medhat Ibrahim, Professor of Applied Spectroscopy, Spectroscopy Department, National Research Center. I am going to present my poster entitled Density Functional Theory Calculation for Graphene Quantum Dots Substituted with Different Transition Metals. Molecular modeling has gained popularity as an essential tool for simulating nanomaterial characteristics as well as their interactions and influences with other materials. The most prominent theory, density functional theory, could investigate the nanomaterial and the influence of modifications on it with an efficiency result that was approximately comparable to the experimental results. As a consequence, density functional theory was used to investigate the influence of transition metal doping with different patterns, such as iron and nickel, on the electronic characteristics of graphene quantum dots. Total dipole moment and band gap energy were computed to investigate the change in electronic characteristics. Furthermore, molecular electrostatic potential mapping for model structures was investigated for monitoring charge transfer, electronegativity, and reactivity. It is concluded that the structure represents graphene quantum dots in its zigzag trigonal shape substituted with iron was the most effective structure for reducing the band gap and increasing the total dipole moment. Additionally, the results also showed that increasing the number of transition metal atoms has negative impacts on graphene quantum dots response. This detailed theoretical calculation study can give an excellent basis for future material design, which might be used for hydrogen adoption and or sensing. Thank you for your attention. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask. Since this antimicrobial anti-tumor activity token simulation, theoretical studies and the electrochemical analysis of novel cadmium, cobalt, copper, and iron complexes containing perpetuated moieties, the authors are Asma Fahim. Hand Magor and Nelly Hussein Mahmoud. The combining of two ligands, perpetuoric and tiperpetuoric acid, to produce noble metal complexes with different metal chlorides in a molar ratio of 1 to 1 to 1 was studied. Furthermore, the obtained mixed uh, complexes uh, were confirmed through different analysis such as elemental analysis and spectral analysis investigations. Moreover, TGE analysis was utilized to study the thermal stability, whereas all kinetic parameters were dripped using coarser and firm approach. Additionally, the crystallinity of these metals uh, was analyzed through an XRD patterns with different potentials. The investigated complexes demonstrated excellent antimicrobial and anti-tumor activity against two different cell lines with cobalt and copper complexes demonstrating superior activity over other complexes, as confirmed by docking analysis. In addition, the optimization of ligand and complexes on a DFT P3LY B LAN L2GZ basis is used to assess their stability and determine physical descriptors FMO orbitals ESP, ESP and MEP. 
Furthermore, the electrochemical characterization and the uh, electrocatalytic properties of metal complexes has been evaluated by using cyclic voltammetry and electrochemical impedance. The serendipitous approach revealed that when a variety of ligands are coupled with metal ions under accurately regulated conditions, the metal exhibited more flexible con uh, coordination geometries. Furthermore, a one-pot complexation technique makes it simple to combine many organic ligands with, the, with known characteristics to uh, a single uh, metal complex. Perpeturic and thyperpetuics uh, have some drug significance because they affect the nervous system and have biological evaluations as hypnotic drugs. Thyperpetuic acid uh, has a sulfur atom in a place of carbonyl oxygen at the C2 position, which results in Increasing lipid solubility and hypnotic potency, a short half-life, quicker metabolic degradation, and a quick commencement activity. The chemical structure, as well as the coordination character of the bidentate or in donor of the ligand, were determined. All the analytic results were in good agreement with the postulated structures. Uh, the observed bond angles of the complexes differ from that uh, predictable for ideal octahedral complexes point to a deformed octahedral geometry. With a slight elongation in some bond lenses of the ligand uh, was noticed in the complexes, which confirms the coordination of the metal to the ligand. So the conclusion, a series of metal complexes with, uh, was synthesized the molar conductivity values confirm that all complexes are non-electrolytes. All of the new complexes have octahedral geometries. All novel compounds demonstrated considerable antimicrobial activity when compared to traditional antifungal and antibacterial drugs. Therefore, it was concluded that the newly synthesized metal complexes may be used as good biological agents. Regarding the cytotoxicity study, the cobalt and the cover showed excellent potential activity more than other complexes and these results were confirmed through docking simulation. The thermal stability of the complexes was determined uh, by their total uh, high total activation energies where iron complex is the most stable. The energies of the homo and lomo orbitals of all complexes were negative which indicates that the ligand and its metal complexes are stable. Also their electrochemical behavior distinguish their oxidation and reduction states and electrocatalytic activity through cyclic voltammetry and electrochemical impedance per scopy of metals. Thank you for all. Hello again. I am Medhat Ibrahim. I am going to talk about theoretical study of substitution of graphene quantum dots with monovalent alkali metals. This work is in collaboration with Professor Hannan L. Hayes from Faculty of Women and Shams University and Dr. Hend Ezat from NRIAJ. Graphene quantum dots have received a lot of interest due to their unique features, including electrical, optical, and physiochemical features, which make them appropriate for a wide variety of applications. Tuning the graphene quantum dots band gap by doping and or functionalization improves the optical, electrical, and physiochemical characteristics of graphene quantum dots. To improve the electrical characteristics of graphene quantum dots, model structures simulate the effects of alkali metals such as sodium, potassium, and lithium substitution on graphene quantum dots in its different shapes including armchair hexagonal, zigzag hexagonal, armchair trigonal, and finally zigzag trigonal. Total dipole moment, band gap energy, and molecular electrostatic potential were determined as parameters that trace the change in electronic characteristics of graphene quantum dots due to substitutions. Consequently, the results showed that armchair hexagonal graphene quantum dots substituted with four sodium atoms exhibited a strong reaction as a result of substitutions that improved the total dipole moment and band gap energy from 0.00 to 19.205 dB and from 3.474 to 0.295 electron volts, respectively. Zigzag trigonal graphene quantum dots substituted with two potassium atoms also shifted from 0.049 to 11.205 dB and from 3.121 to 0.190 electron volts, respectively. The substitution of alkali metals on graphene quantum dots causes a major change in their electrical characteristics, 
and this could open the way for improved aqueous batteries. Finally, this theoretical investigation provides an empirical framework for the experimental production of new materials with applications in electrochemical energy storage, electrocatalysis, and aqueous batteries. Finally, it could be concluded that these new materials can be used in energy storage devices. Thank you for your time. Everyone, I'm Rania Badri, Assistant Lecturer at Physics Department, Faculty of Women at Chams University. Our poster today will be about carboxymethyl cellulose sodium copper oxide zinc oxide core shell nanocomposite for skin care products. I wrote the words broadband UV filters and high refractive index materials. As we know that due to the depletion of the stratospheric ozone layer has led to a gradual increase in the UV radiation, which increases the harmful effects on human health, such as skin poorness, skin cancer, and hyperpigmentation. As a result, the number of skin care products increased. Uh, accordingly, the, uh, the aim of the, our study is to prepare polymer nanocomposite based on CMC and copper oxide zinc oxide core shell for the uh, efficient block of UV radiation. Thus, we prepare the core shell nanoparticles uh, as presented in this figure uh, using the precipitation method, and then we uh, added the uh, uh, different weight percentage of the prepared core shell nanoparticles to the CMC solution using the casting method. The XRG results confirmed the, for the, amorphous uh, the amorphous nature of the prepared polymer nanocomposite due to the appearance of the broad peak at nearly 2 theta equal to 20 degree. However, uh, FTIR uh, results confirmed the formation of the hydrogen bonding between CMC and core shell nanoparticles due to the the increasing the intensity of the OH group of CMC and, uh, and the intensity of the uh, core shell uh, searching band. However, the present uh, figure presents the, uh, the, the increase in the absorbance of the pure CMC with the addition of the core shell nanoparticles and the, the appearance of the characteristic band of by uh, to by star transition of CMC and that of the core shell nanoparticles. Also, we calculated the absorption coefficient and we found that the absorption edge of a pure CMC was shifted to the lower energy region with the addition of uh, core shell nanoparticles and, uh, and confirmed the appearance of the second absorption edge. The transmittance spectra of pure CMC was found to be decreased with increasing the concentration of the core shell nanoparticles and, the, and it extended to the visible region, which is a very good result. This table uh, confirms, uh, presents the UV blocking percentage of pure CMC and CMC due to different concentrations of core shell nanoparticles in the three regions of the UV radiation. And we found that the film containing four weight percentage of core shell nanoparticles can block 100% uh, of the incident UV radiation which is a very good result. Additionally, we calculated the optical band gap using two models, torque equation and absorption spectra fitting model, and we found that the band gap decreased with increasing core shell nanoparticles concentration, and also the two models are consistent with each other. Additionally, we calculated the refractive index, and it, uh, it was found that it uh, increased to its value uh, to twice its value with, uh, with the addition of a uh, forward percentage of core shell nanoparticles. Thus, based on the obtained results, we use this uh, film containing forward percentage of core shell nanoparticles, and uh, we uh, to enhance the blocking of one of the some blocks present in the Egyptian market, we dissolve the we uh, we dilute the uh, the mesh sump block in the ionized water, and then we added different concentrations of our polymer nanocomposite to this uh, sump block. And then we, uh, we studied the transmittance of this uh, sump block uh, uh, polymer nanocomposite. We, we found that the transmittance of the pure sump block decreased sharply with increasing the concentration of our polymer nanocomposite until it reaches to a 100 percentage, which is, which is a very good result. Additionally, we calculated the sun protection factor for pure sump block, uh, sun block, which is found to be 5. Uh, and we found that it increases to 22.1 uh, with the addition of uh, 10 weight percentage of our polymer nanocomposite, which is a very good result. Uh, uh, which according to uh, the published report by the World Health Organization, they recommended using sun block with sun protection factor between uh, 15 and 14, which is the best uh, for, uh, for, uh, for using. Our conclusion is that the nanocomposite filters are suitable candidates for UV shielding applications. Thank you. The present investigations study the effect of different solvents on the various spectroscopic and photophysical properties of malachite green dye sample to suggest its probability to act as laser dye. These include the absorption and emission cross-sections, fluorescence quantum yield, and fluorescence lifetime. In addition, the simulation of the energy gap, bond length, and IR spectrum. Firstly, from Fig.1 and 2. In Table 1, it can be seen that in aprotic solvents, ethanol, acetone, methanol, 
both absorbance wavelength and fluorescence wavelength of malachite green decrease with the increase of solvent polarity. However, both absorbance wavelength and fluorescence wavelength has no evident difference in aprotic solvents, one for dioxane, DMF. So, all of the molar extinction coefficient, fluorescence intensity, and fluorescence quantum yield of malachite green gradually increase with the increase of solvent polarity. The UV viscount spectra of different solvents are shown in Fig. 1. In. Role of point spread function and time of flight modeling in improving breast cancer Peru time slash central time images using various reconstruction algorithms. By Iman El Sayed. Biophysics Research Group, Physics Department, Faculty of Science, Mansura University, Mansura, Egypt. Breast cancer is one of the most common cancers in women worldwide. A total of about 1.5 million women, or 25% of all women with cancer, worldwide receive a breast cancer diagnosis each year, making it one of the most prevalent malignancies among women. Mammography is less sensitive than other screening techniques like PET-CT and magnetic resonance imaging MRI. This study aimed to evaluate the effect of the ordered subsets expectation maximization OSEM, on breast cancer patients Peru time slash central time image quality. Also, to evaluate the effect of either point spread function PSF, and time of flight TOF, factors on the enhancement of the breast cancer patients Peru time slash central time images. This was done by evaluating the changes in maximum standardized uptake value SUV max and mean standard uptake value SUV mean. Furthermore, metabolic tumor volume MTV, and total lesion glycolysis ITLG, were estimated for breast cancer patients with known and definite body mass index BMI. 50 breast lesion patients had undergone 18F fluoroidioxyglucose FDG Peru time slash central time. The PET data were reconstructed with a baseline ordered subsets expectation, maximization, OSEM, algorithm and reconstructed data with the point spread function, PSF, algorithm with TOF. The differences in SUV max and SUV mean were compared among different reconstruction algorithms. Additionally, the variation in SUV max, SUV mean, MTV, and TLG evaluated results were compared among different reconstruction algorithms for optimal OSEM plus PSF with TOF using a General Electric GE, workstation protocol and designed MATLAB code. To make our investigations, the SUVs were estimated at different OSEM subsets, PSF, and TOF for the GE Zellerus workstation and MATLAB code. Since SUV's value is the most intensive quantitative parameter used and is often measured for analyzing FDG PET images in routine clinical practice. Clinical examinations to assess lesion detectability with changing weight patients are necessary to confirm the clinical usefulness of the OSEM and TOF information. To improve the effectiveness of the image and reduce the noise, it was noticed that the use of the optimum OSEM subset, OSEM30, and the PSF, PSF5, at constant TOF elevated the PET image quality. At the same time, MTV and TLG values were optimum for OSEM30 for both the GE Zellerus workstation and MATLAB code calculations. In contrast, the obtained value of the SNR was higher for GE Zellerus workstation OSEM30 than for MATLAB code OSEM21 calculation. This study showed that using OSEM30 and PSF5 at constant TOF enhanced and improved the PET image quality. This was affirmed by evaluating different parameters, i.e., SNR, MTV, and TLG. Good afternoon, everyone. Let me start by introducing myself. My name is Mena, and I am a Ph.D. student and working assistant lecturer at the Faculty of Science at Mansura University. My topic research is the distinctive structure and biophysical features of sol gel synthesized aluminosilicate glass ceramic containing cerium oxide and I am going to talk for about four minutes on this subject. First, what does ceramic glass mean? Glass ceramics are inorganic and non-metallic substances formed through the managed crystallization of glasses using a variety of treatment procedures. Because of their outstanding properties, glass ceramic materials are increasingly used in a range of applications. Rare earth elements are employed in a variety of growing industrial applications. Their existence in glass compounds and ceramics impart unique material features that improve thermal stability and strength. 
In this study, glass ceramic was obtained by the Sol Gel method to investigate the role of cerium oxide in the glass ceramic after various sintering temperatures on crystallization behavior, phase composition, microstructure, physical properties, as well as the roughness surface for use in biomedical applications. In the present work, obtained powdered samples were then sintered at temperatures of 550, 700, and 850 for two hours to obtain the corresponding glass ceramic and then use physical measurements X-ray diffraction, FTR spectroscopy, Raman spectroscopy, SEM, EDX, roughness surface, and physical properties. Table 1 shows the composition of the glasses studied and their shorthand names. In the section of results and discussion from XRD shown in Figure 1 the sintering temperature at 550 in sample S10, the crystal growth rate increased because contained 10 mol percent of CEO2. With raising the temperature to 700, peak lines appear in samples with a greater mol percent of cerium oxide rather than the 550 temperature. This tendency is accelerated by further temperature increases of up to 850. The number of nuclei, crystal growth rate, and nucleation rate all rose significantly after 850. Figure 2 X-ray of CEO2 soda lime aluminosilicate glasses after sintering temperature 850. From FTIR shown in Figure 3 the band at 935 conjugated with the band at 1038 when temperature increased during treatment because of rearrangement of QNC units, especially in Q2 and Q3. The band at 443 increased in intensity and width with sintering due to modifier. Figure 4 FTIR spectra of CEO2 sodalime aluminosilicate glasses sintering at 850. Raman spectra in Figure 5 of the glass ceramic show a few characteristic bands because of fused CO with increasing temperature in addition to the rearrangement of QN in the silica network. Figure 6 shows the surface morphology of composites containing CEO2. At sintering temperature 850, the increase in the concentration of fine cerium in the composites decreases the glassy surface marginally. It is owing to the presence of crystalline cerium particles that are dispersed uniformly throughout the glass network. The images indicate a dense structure with perforations, which increases surface interaction. Figure 7 depicts the 3D topography and roughness profiles of CEO2 soda lime aluminosilicate glass ceramic at various concentrations. Finally, the physical properties of cerium soda lime aluminosilicate glass ceramic in figure 8. Glass density is related to molecular weights. In our investigation, CEO2 rose at the sacrifice of NO2 and Ca oxide, resulting in higher density. The major causes for increased packing density in the glass network are reductions in VM and VF. Increased density is related to the high compactness of the glass ceramic formed from the addition of CEO2 which improves the durability and hardness of the samples. Thank you. Hello everyone, now I will present my research, which is entitled Physical Studies of Bi-203 Modified Borosilicate Glass. In this research, a glass sample of composition X by 203, 60 B203, 10 Na20, 30 X, SiO2, mole percent was prepared via melting technique. X-ray diffraction technique was applied to prove the amorphous nature of the prepared glasses. UV, a visible absorption spectra, were measured in the range, 200 to 1,100 nanometers, which were applied to evaluate optical properties, including direct and indirect optical energy band gaps. Undoped glass sample is observed to exhibit strong UV absorption, due to the trace iron impurities. Different physical parameters including density, molar volume, packing density, free volume, ion concentration, polaron radius, and average boron-boron distance were calculated. Infrared absorption spectra were measured in the range 4000 to 400 cm-1 which revealed the presence of both triangular and tetrahedral borate groups. And we concluded that, according to XRD, Diffraction, a broad band is appeared in the range 2 equals 470, and there is no any detection sharp peak, which confirm the amorphous nature of all fabricated samples. The XRD results obtained, glassy nature, indicates to the appropriate uses such as optical applications. By using FTIR measurement some bands appeared in the fingerprint region extending from 400 to 1600 cm, one as characteristic to vibrational units. The UV.VIS measurement produced a peak that indicated the presence of bi, and its strength increased with increasing bi content. 
It was noticed that variation in the bi content at expense of silicon dioxide is heavily affecting all physical parameters of the synthesized glasses. Finally, the density of all samples was determined, and it was shown that the density increased by increasing by 2O3 content. This is because the molecular weight of Bi2O3 is larger compared to that of SiO2. Preparation and Characterization of Low Melting Transition Metal Oxide Doped Borate Glass By Iman Othman Borate glasses are one of the most excellent glass-forming materials. The covalent network of amorphous boron oxide causes considerable changes, resulting in the creation of anionic sites that accommodate the modified alkali cations. Glasses containing transition metal ions, TMS ions, have interesting optical and electrical properties, which are due to the presence of such transition metal ions in several oxidation or coordination states in the glassy matrix. Vanadium as one of the transition metal ions can exist in glasses in three possible oxidation forms, namely, the trivalent, tetravalent, and the pentavalent states. X-ray diffraction technique was applied to prove the amorphous nature of the prepared glasses, a broad band is appeared, and there is no any detection sharp peak, which confirm the amorphous nature of all fabricated samples. UV visible absorption spectra were measured in the range, 200 to 1100 nanometers, which were applied to evaluate optical properties, including direct and indirect optical energy band gaps. Undoped glass sample is observed to exhibit strong UV absorption, due to the trace iron impurities. The presence of V3 plus ions together with the other vanadium valence states, V4 plus, V5 plus, was proved by the appearance of extra visible absorption bands. By using FTIR measurement some bands appeared in the fingerprint region extending from 400 to 1600 cm1 as characteristic to vibrational units. Different physical parameters including density, molar volume, packing density, free volume, ion concentration, polaron radius, and average boron-boron distance were calculated. Infrared absorption spectra were measured in the range 4000 to 400 cm-1 which revealed the presence of both triangular and tetrahedral borate groups. Our poster is entitled Design and Implementation of Automatic Lighting Control System Based on Optocoupler Under Different Temperature Influence. In this work, automatic lighting control system based on optotriac of type MOC3023 LDR and triac type BT136 was designed and implemented to control and manage indoor lighting level. The IV characteristics of input LED and output triac were studied. Furthermore, the illumination control system was implemented and tested at different firing angle values. In addition, the effect of ambient temperature on the behavior of optotriac and its parameters are tested. In this concern, IV characteristics of optotriac and its parameters were studied at different temperature levels, from 25 up to 100 degree. The results show that the behavior of both input LED and output triac of optotriac are affected over the proposed temperature range. With an increase in temperature, V3 threshold value of LED decreased from 1.2 down to 1.09 volt, causing a pronounced change in both forward and reverse breakover voltage values up to 50%. Based on, a remarkable change in the control system response range was recorded, whereas the initial daylight intensity of 82 up to 224 lux was shifted to higher values of 170 up to 278 lux over temperature range. Consequently, the system power consumption ratio shifted towards higher value from 49.77 up to 85.93% over the temperature range. Finally, we conclude that the increase in ambient temperature up to 100 degree significantly affects the electrical and light parameters of the proposed system as well as its accuracy, resulting in a severe increase in system power consumption ratio by percent of 36.16%. Structural, optical, and ESR studies of samarium ions doped sodium almonovirate glass.
The usual melt quenching technique was used to get samarium doped sodium aluminoborate glass samples. In the earlier decades, borate glass, with its huge variability in composition, structure, and properties, promised a bright future in the field of linear and nonlinear optics and related fields. The importance of borate glasses in glass applications is their high stability, low melting temperature, high transparency, and capability of doping with large concentrations of additives. The glass as host matrix can be doped with rare earth ions in high concentration, possesses a unique structure. Rare earth ion activated materials find wide applications in display devices, lighting technology, solar cell energy conversion, and broad applications in optical areas like optical switches for laser and sensors and optical communications. So the structure and luminescent properties of rare earth dope materials have been extensively studied in borate glasses, samarium ions were excited in the UV region, and several transitions were observed. For the current study, synthesized samples were characterized using different spectroscopic techniques, including Fourier transform infrared, UV slash vis, and X-ray diffraction. The X-ray diffraction pattern reveals the amorphous nature of all studied samples. The results of FTR and density show that by adding samarium oxide at the expense of aluminum oxide, there is almost no change in the structure of the glass. UV slash vis spectral data reveals the presence of samarium ion characteristic band attribute for different transitions starting in the ground state 6H5 slash 2 to their various excited states. The intensity of the absorption spectra increases as the concentration of samarium oxide increases at the expense of aluminium oxide. My poster is entitled A Closer Look to the Factors Affecting the Switching Transient Time of Optocouplers, presented by Assistant Prof. Dr. Wafi Abdel Boss. Abstract The significant parameter for high speed optoelectronic switch or transient time elapsed between the input poles and the output poles. So, the present paper was aimed to study the factors affecting the transient time, namely, a turn on time, which including some of delay time and rise time, and a turn off time, which including some of storage time and the full time. The experimental setup. The proposed optoelectronic switch based on optocoupler type 4N25 is often applied in many applications for providing galvanic isolation. This optocoupler consists of light emitting diode and phototransistor. We apply a square wave from function generator and bias voltage from DC regulator power supply and um, observing the input and the output waveforms on tectronics digitizing oscilloscope to measure transient time at the same time. Also adding a resistor between the base of phototransistor and the emitter and measuring transient times at different values of the following parameters. Results the studied parameters or factors on transient time is the load resistance, forward current, the bias voltage, the meter base resistance, the temperature. We represent a turn on time on left y axis and the turn on time on the right y axis. We observe that the turn on time is slightly affected by this factor while a turn off time is, is um, um, more affected by this factor. The turn off time is improved by decreasing the values of load resistance, the input current of the lead, and the temperature, and increasing the bias voltage um, given from a DC regulated power supply to the value of 5 volts. Finally, inserting a resistor between a base of this, um, a base of a phototransistor and the emitter, in decreasing the uh, full time in the range from 80 kilo ohm up to 200 kilo ohm. Up this value or low this range, the full time is increased.
थैंक यू